Chao, originally released in February 2021, is getting his first ever rerun in Genshin Impact. And here is what you need to know about Xiao from a meta point of perspective for his rerun. It's currently rated as a 3 out of 5 very very balanced characters, which means he's not exceptionally game breaking, but he's definitely not weak either. So if you don't really care about Xiao either from his gameplay perspective or personality perspective, you can definitely skip him and it's probably more recommended to skip him. However, if you do care about those aspects, then rolling for a shout is not a bad idea as he will be able to perform really really well in the Abyss environment. As always, 3 out of 5 rating means that the character is very balanced and it's very good for the characters as you're not pressured to roll for them if you do not like them. However, if you do like them, they will be fine and they will be able to perform well. Anyway, with that being said, Xiao is a character with clear strength and weaknesses. His obvious strength is that he has very very large AoE capability, one of the best in the game, especially for enemy that cannot be easily gripped using uh, an evil CC character like either Kaza or Venti. For example, this can be seen in the current Abyss Floor Troll, Train Bird 2, where there is free Mago Genki that cannot be easily grouped as they like to walk around a lot and you cannot use CC on them. In this case, Xiao actually performed especially well against these enemy as his large AoE range allowed him to consistently hit every enemy at once while pretty much every other character including Ganyu kind of struggled. While Xiao have really good AoE capability, a common misconception about Xiao is that he does not have good single target damage at all and this is entirely false. There's actually two techniques that is available to Xiao in in order to dish out good single target damage, the first one being the jet technique. The jet technique on Xiao describes a technique where you do a charge attack on Xiao and then immediately cancel out of the ending lag of that charge attack by doing a plunge attack. So you do a charge attack, immediately jump out to cancel the end lag, and then follow it with a low plunge. Repeating this actually gives you a fairly good amount of single target damage, however there's more than that. Xiao plunge attack have a further modifier known as the plunge damage modifier and also known as collision plunge or bonking. When you direct Directly collide with an enemy during a shower plunge in the middle of the air, you will be able to do an additional instance worth of damage, which is what the plunge modifier do, and it does exactly half of the low plunge damage, which basically means you 1.5 times the amount of low plunge damage that you do. In the past, this was not talked about a lot because before Inazuma came out, many of the enemy have weird collision box that make it very hard for Xiao to hit this damage punch. However, nowadays with the big Inazuma enemy, the enemy that you really care about single target damage, these are things like Magu Genki or PMA, they have a very large collision box. So if you are good at playing Xiao, then you can actually hit this punch damage modifier very reliably and therefore 1.5 times in your low plunge damage. Combining the two techniques just mentioned before gives you the jet bonking combo, which basically means you start with a jet combo or a charge attack, and then you jump out of that charge attack, and then finally you do a plunge attack to cancel out of the jump. However, on the way down when you're doing that plunge, you will aim for the enemy collision box and get an other instance worth of damage in, which is the plunge collision damage. Although his single target damage is still not as high as the dedicated one like Hu Tao team or national team, in total this gives you a lot of extra damage and lets you get a lot of single target damage on Xiao. So if you know how to properly play Xiao, you can actually get a great amount of single target damage and the rumor that he does not have good single target damage at all is completely false. Now currently Xiao does not have a 4 set dedicated artifact made for him, however in my personal opinion this is actually a upside instead of a negative thing. Xiao really really appreciate attack percent a lot as his elemental burst gives you a bunch of damage percent, that means that Xiao use attack percent better than a lot of the other characters. The 2 gladiator Shimanara set will allow you to get 36% attack percent in total which is actually really 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 good for Xiao. In fact, I suspect that if Xiao ever get a 4 set artifact set, it's not going to be a significantly or meaningful enough improvement over the 2 Gladiator 2 shipment now anyway. So basically what I'm trying to say is this artifact set is actually really really good for Xiao already and it's not really going to get much better. But the really great thing about this artifact set is that it's so easy to farm compared to almost any other artifact in the game because you don't really farm for either of this. The Gladiator you just casually get when you're doing bosses and this Shiminara you casually get when you're doing the Album Domain which 
is one of the best domain in the game that you should really be doing. Since Shao not only uses a 2 plus 2 set instead of a 4 set, he also used two extremely easy to acquire set. This means it's much easier to obtain better artifact on your Shao compared to many many other characters. In fact, Shao is by far my most geared characters and I currently have a 210 CB artifact on Shao. Even though I did not farm for Shao at all, I just naturally obtained these artifacts throughout regular day playing. Just in case you're curious, here's my Shao. But artifact aside, there are many aspects about Shao that is really expensive about him. Uh, starting off from his weapon, Shao doesn't have many good weapon choices. In the 4 star category, he either have Deathmatch or Black Cliff. Both of them are rather hard to obtain with the former only being in the battle pass and the latter only being in the dark glitch shop. That means you either have to spend money directly to get the deathmatch or you have to spend star glitter which is exclusive premium currency to obtain a black curve poem. Uh, in both of those cases it might be hard to do for some people and otherwise he doesn't have many other good weapon choices. At best he have like a fast lens as he do require some energy. Speaking of energy, Xiao does have several gameplay issues. The number one as we mentioned is of course energy as Xiao is very dependent on entering his elemental burst to do any kind of damage. That means that Xiao have a small to a medium amount of energy requirement because any time that you don't satisfy the energy requirement, your damage will drop significantly. Although a good rotation Xiao or a well built Xiao shouldn't run into too much energy problem. In any time that you do happen to run into energy problem, your damage will drop by a significant amount. The second gameplay issues with Xiao is that he is rather squishy. Now during Xiao elemental burst, he will drain a current percent amount of your HP every single second. This is actually not that big of a deal as it drink current HP percent, not max HP percent. That means the lower HP you have, the less it drink, and therefore you the more you are able to survive. Uh, given that abyss are a time trial and you should be beating the chamber fast enough anyway, if you do beat the chamber fast enough, you shouldn't be draining too much of your HP unless you're fighting corrosion, in which case you have to be careful as if you're low HP, you could die from a corrosion and will require a healer. But otherwise, the HP chain is a contributor to him being squishy, but it's not the only thing. The real reason why Xiao is more squishy than other characters is because when you are doing plunge attack, you're spending a lot of time in the middle of the air, which does not allow you to dodge. You cannot do any kind of dodging in the middle of your air, which makes you very, very vulnerable to any kind of attack. As if the enemy do decide to attack you, you have no choice but to take that attack. This makes Shooter heavily recommended on Xiao, either using a Diona or the premium version which is Zhongli. Having a shield is really really highly recommended when you're playing Xiao. It is not necessary especially if you're running a super healer like Bennett or just killing everything fast enough but it's highly recommended. And it does go into our next point which is Xiao team comp is really really restrictive. Xiao team comp is a little bit restrictive at the current moment with the best version of the Xiao team being Xiao followed by and then Jin, Zhongli and Alvedo in those exact order with no replacement. And Jin can generate less animal energy which further contribute to the energy requirement that you need on Xiao. It's possible to replace Jean with Sucrose as mentioned before and this does generate you more energy but then you miss out on a healer and you still need the Zhongli and Albedo. One of the primary reasons of this is because Xiao doesn't work with many support in the game because of the way he's placed out. Is. For example, Xiao doesn't really work with characters like Xin Shu or Beidou because Xiao does not normal attack a lot and he said he just used punch attack and there is not a lot of character that synergize well with punch attack as he's the only character who does it in the game. While it's possible to draft a more free to play version of a Xiao team using Xiao, Sucros, Fischl and then Diona with Diona being your healer and your shooter. It does mean that in order to draft a higher end premium Xiao team, you will require more expensive 5 star unit as mentioned before where compared to other characters, they can get away with 4 star unit for example like Chao or Raiden can simply get away with Xing Chu's Bennett and then Chang Ling as their powerful team. Because Xiao doesn't work with that many support, the majority damage dealt in a Xiao team is gonna fall onto Xiao. That means Xiao have the responsibility to hyper carry his team and that make investing to him a little bit more expensive as you want to hyper invest into him a little bit more. Previously we talked about how artifact is cheap but the other aspect is that his talent is rather expensive because it's highly recommended to crown your Xiao if you are going to play Xiao. Once again not just because most of the damage fall into Xiao so you want to push your Xiao as high as possible but also because Xiao is what I like to call a double dipping character. A double dipping character means that you have two 
two damage swords contributing to one damage number. So in this case, Xiao Plunge attacks depend on not only his plunge talent, but also on his elemental burst talent. That means if you increase both of these talents, you will be able to double dip from both of these talents and increase your damage number further, which also means you really should crown both of the talent at the very least, or bring it to nine, but you really should crown. And you will burn two crown in the process of building your Xiao, which some people might not like, as crown is a very valuable resources, very limiting resources that some people don't want to spend unless it is their absolute favorite characters. And of course, if your absolute favorite character is Xiao, then there's no problem about that. After all, you should probably only roll Xiao if you really like Xiao, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video and even still now, but just a quick thing to also call out. There are some other minor gameplay issues like how Xiao have massive stagger on your target, which could be a good thing, but also could be a bad thing. Having massive stagger means that you can permanently CC your enemy very easily, but it also means that if you have multiple enemy, it's very easy to split them apart and fail your AOD. Uh, on the other hand, there is certain enemy that is just not very favorable for Xiao, as Xiao cannot use a Nemo support that well. Since Xiao does a Nemo damage and currently there's no a Nemo shredder outside of the expensive option like GNC4, and you don't get the VV available to you, that means Xiao does kind of lack in damage when you are fighting enemy with high elemental resistance, for example like the current wolf in the abyss. Not to mention that the wolf teleport around and make it very hard for Xiao to hit. So Xiao do have some trouble facing certain enemy, but to be honest, every single character have certain counter against certain enemy. So I don't think that's a huge point of deduct on Xiao, but overall Xiao does do very competitive in terms of DPS. He's pretty much in line with most of the other meta characters. I think Xiao is one of the most balanced characters in Genshin, have clear strength and weaknesses. I think the other most balanced character is Ito, and I honestly think both Xiao and Ito are very, very balanced with clear strength and weakness and are very in line with other meta characters, which again is a great thing. That means that you can roll for them if you like and they will not disappoint you. But if you don't like them, then you can just skip. You don't feel the pressure of, oh, I'm missing out on the super OP characters when they're not. That being said, if you're rolling for Xiao, good luck on your roll. Hopefully, I'll see you all next time as well. So let me know what you think and like, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time, okay? Thank mm -hmm. you.